I've just woken up and I've got so much to tell all of you today because I've received the report from the architect for the chapel. So I now know exactly how much the chapel is going to cost and I'm going to get up and go over to the chapel and talk to you all about it. But first, I want to tell you about the first thing I saw on my phone this morning when I woke up, which was a text from Jean-Baptiste, who is the flower grower in Chateau Roux. And as all of you seem to know him as the hot French flower guy, I thought you might quite enjoy seeing it for yourselves. Hi, Stephanie. I'm back from the early morning harvest. Uh, so this is your package. You've got digitals. You've got, well, I don't remember the name, but just smell it. Um, Iceland puppies, Vasselia, Statis. And inside this, you've got the very last anemones. Plus, I'm sending you extra flowers, the very first sweet peas you should enjoy the smell too okay so i'm sending this this morning and you get this this afternoon and i hope this travels well you tell me bye bye so i'm looking forward to seeing those flowers later and seeing what pavlina does with them all but first i'm getting up and let's go over to the chapel we're not allowed to have anybody coming into the chapel but i'm going to risk it to tell you all what is going on and to show you the problems in here this is Lalanne's Chapel of St. Joseph. It was built in the 1860s and consecrated by the Archbishop of Bourges in 1866. We found one of the original invitations for the consecration of the chapel, which is so precious to have. It's a very pure example of the Neo-Gothic because what we have here is everything from that same period. And the Neo-Gothic was mid 19th century fashion where they were redoing the Gothic decorations. So every inch of the chapel was painted and gilded. And the extraordinary thing is we still have the letters from the architect who worked on the chapel to the Marquis who was living at La Lande. And he explains how he's designed the statues, he's designed the doors, he designed the altar, he designed the railings into the sacristy. Everything was designed at the same time. So this is very architecturally important and we really must save it. But I brought a bit here to show you just how bad a condition it's in because it's suffering terribly from damp in the lower part of the walls. A lot of the painted decoration has just been coming off the walls like this. And the reason why saving the paintings on the walls is so unbelievably expensive is that each piece that still exists needs to be injected so that a special type of glue can be put in between the wall and the plaster and then the plaster can be saved and it won't flake off as these bits have done. And then once this is fixed into place, the entire chapel would need to be cleaned, but with special solvents really minutely by hand to ensure that none of the original oil painting is destroyed in the cleaning process. And then all of the original bits need to be restored, just getting dust off there. And all of the gilding has to be redone because this was all done with real gold. And when the light hits it, you can really see the gold glinting in the sunlight filtered through the stained glass windows. Imagine all of it restored and gleaming in the light of the stained glass and candlelight. And then all of the missing parts need to be repainted by hand. They have to make the original stencils that would have been used as well to fill in all of the gaps. And if you look above the door, there is a painting. It's the death of St. Joseph. Oh my goodness, that's giving me a chill. I don't know if you can see, but the light coming in from the stained glass window is giving the angel a halo. Well, that's a sign if ever I saw one. We're on the right track. And just next to the angel, you can see where they've actually taped up the plaster to try to prevent it from getting worse until restoration can begin. Just below St. Joseph, they've also put tape and also the face of the Virgin Mary standing by St. Joseph's deathbed. All of these things we're trying to preserve until we can get the work done. And there you can see the signature of the artist and the date 1868. And this fresco alone will cost over 15,000 euros to repair. And as you can see, it's not even the painting that's in the worst condition. The last Marquis to live here full time died in the 80s and after that his family used it as a holiday home and it was split between 11 children who owned it equally so they could never really get everybody to agree on the works it needed doing. 
And the state of the chapel is one of the reasons that they actually decided to sell because they couldn't bear to see it getting worse and worse. They felt terrible about the state of the chapel because they were such a religious family. Two of those children who sold to me were priests and their grandmother is still remembered in the local area because she used to teach catechism to the local children who would come to this chapel to be taught by her. So as soon as I bought, I promised the Marquis that one of the first things we would do would be to re-roof the chapel to at least stop the damage from getting worse. And we did that. The entire roof is new. After that, to keep the water out, we started going through restoring each of the stained glass windows one by one because they had a lot of holes in them. There was yet more water getting in that way. Birds were getting in, as you can tell from a lot of the gifts that they left behind on the walls. It's been blessed by the birds. And that stage of our restoration is complete. All of the stained glass windows have been redone and the roof has been done. So the next phase, or so I thought, was to start to restore all of the paintwork on the walls. A few years ago, when this YouTube channel took off, I realized that we would finally be able to restore the interior of the chapel. And I employed a chapel restorer to come to do the paintwork and to fix the vault that had fallen. And he kept putting it off. He was extremely busy. Uh, he was locked down during COVID like everybody else. There were so many delays. And when he finally got to the site a few months ago, he was about to start. He even had his scaffolding here. And he suddenly realized that the vault was actually moving. It was slipping. And it wasn't a case of just decoratively repairing it. But in fact, major structural work needed to be done, which he couldn't carry out. So I contacted a specialist architecture firm who just deal in churches, chapels and chateaus. They have a great reputation. They're working on churches all over France and in fact, one locally. So they were able to pop in and visit the chapel. And they told me that just to get the survey done would cost a small fortune because we need so many specialists to come and look at it and make their own reports. We need structural specialists, but also, of course, the paintwork specialists. And in fact, the company who came to look at this chapel are currently working on restoring the paintwork in Notre Dame de Paris after the terrible fire that they had. When they saw the paintings, they were so happy to be looking at them and working on them because they said they're very unusually high quality and you wouldn't expect it in a little chapel like this hidden away in the middle of France. The cost of the surveys alone came to over 20,000 euros just for the surveys with no work actually being done on the chapel. Considering the cost of the surveys, I was obviously expecting the works to be expensive and I was coming up with a plan. We've already put quite a lot of money aside for the chapel, but even I wasn't expecting the actual figure, which I received last week. And it's actually, it's hard for me to say it out loud. It's 430,000 euros, nearly half a million euros to restore the chapel. I told Dan and he said, oh, you're rebuilding the chapel. Oh, I didn't realize. No, no, that's, that's to restore it. And so at first I had a panic attack and I, I, didn't, I couldn't see any path ahead. But when I calmed down and I started to look at the breakdown, I saw it was split into two sections. One is the structural work that is needed to ensure that the vault does not collapse on anybody's head. It actually involves removing part of the roof so they can get in and repair the vault from above and then putting the roof back. So there's really a great deal of work that's needed. And to fix the facade, which is starting to come away a little from the building, to put a French drain around the entire building and move away all of the rainwater, to fix absolutely every bit of grout on the exterior of the chapel because we're getting water ingress through the walls themselves and that is 150,000 euros. So I'm just looking at that section for now. If we can tackle the 150,000 euros, we can save the chapel. The heartbreaking part for me is that I thought we were at the stage where we could tackle this paintwork, which is in such a precarious condition. Any more bits of plaster could start to fall off at any point but I'm 150,000 euros away from being able to do that. And in fact, we also have structural issues inside, though luckily at the same time I got those reports and it seems that repairing the beam, which is blocking three of our rooms from being used in the chateau, one is the grand salon and the two bedrooms above it, that's the three rooms that are being blocked, that actually came in at less expensive than I thought. So I'm very reassured about that. That's going to be okay. It's this that's terrifying me. It's protecting the chapel. And if we can't repair it, then future generations will never see this jewel of a chapel. It'll be like many churches throughout France where the old plaster has crumbled over the centuries. They've just been whitewashed. 
and we have no idea what they used to look like in the past and I don't want that to happen on my watch. It's too beautiful, too good an example of the neo-gothic which didn't go on for many years in France and became quite unfashionable in the years afterwards so a lot of the buildings that were made at that time were allowed to just decay and now people are starting to realize how precious that architectural style was. And we have such a perfect example of it here. I'm absolutely passionate about saving it. So I will find a way of going ahead with the 150,000 euro structural repairs. I know that the structure can be saved. I don't know how I am going to find the extra 300,000 euros. I mean, just saying it, it's unbelievable. I am bewildered. I don't know what to do. We have the lake to put back. We have all of the facades to do. And of course we have to repair the beam in the Grand Salon, as well as the terrace. There are so many structural issues in the chateau itself that we're going to be working on bit by bit. We're in the middle of a six figure heating system. And of course, it's not just these huge projects that need doing. I also have the monthly running costs of the chateau. Now I made a video about the monthly running costs about three years ago, two or three years ago. And it's quite funny to look back on it now because we were running La Lande on an absolute shoestring, but there was nobody employed except for Marie Poupin. I think Marie Poupin was possibly already here at that point. But now of course we have Marie Poupin and Dave cleaning inside the chateau. Matty and Maria, who are focusing on the bed and breakfast side of the chateau. Philip, who is helping me to create all of these videos for you. On the restoration side, we have Amory, Kevin, and the hidden handyman. Of course, in the garden, there's Pavlina, Ombeline, and Kirsty. And in the woods, Nick and Cameron. And just paying all of those people each month costs me over 20,000 euros. So I have such a weight of responsibility on me for the people in the chateau and for the structure of the chateau. And sometimes it does get overwhelming. So really a huge thank you to all of the patrons of the Chateau Diaries at whatever tier you are, because you're not just transforming the Chateau de la Lande in our lifetime, but you are transforming it for future generations. And because of you, I will be able to do something that is very precious to me, which is to keep the promise that I made to the Marquis de Nadayac, who sold the Chateau de la Lande to me. As some of you will know, he passed away not that long ago. We have the order of service of his funeral here in the chapel to keep memory of him here. And I will keep my promise to him. We are going to go ahead with the structural renovations of the chapel. I'm guessing it will probably start in the spring, but that's something I have to discuss with the architect. But I don't know how I'm going to find 300,000 euros for the paint like that's that's blown me away that is a really terrifying figure with everything else that needs to be done but it will put that off until after the structure of the chapel and then we will try and see if we can maybe do it in stages perhaps one piece of the wall at a time and eventually just work our way around but in my lifetime I want to see this chapel completely restored Hansel and Gretel are wondering how the chapel restoration is coming on hasn't quite started yet but we're on it From the moment I got back from Ven Venice, I've been so excited to show everyone the border. But the transformation, Kirsty. <laughs> and it looks as though you even colour coordinated this entire area. Completely on purpose. I, I, I could tell. I looked at I that, I thought. <laughs> Kirsty's been having sleepless nights, sitting up with a notepad, planning yes, this. My colour cards from being q absolutely. But the peony is about to come out, the irises. They're just stunning. God, it what is a stunning. They are as well. Did any of the ones that we bought at that uh, show come yes. out? They're, look, they're not flowering yet. But they're, they're, they're there, they're, they're alive. They're alive, they're all in the daily, well, are the daily. Okay, so moment, we'll see those so. later. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's splendid. It's coming together. I'm absolutely, there's, um, I follow a couple of um, Instagrammers and I copy their ideas all the time, get my inspiration. And to have um, pinks, reds, and purples together. It looks you good. Think it clash, but it actually works so, so well. No, it well. does. It looks very sophisticated. Yeah. And what are these plants next to the peonies? The very delicate these ones. These are the heucura. Um, are the heucura flower? I'm pretty sure they are. Um, they. I think we've got some guests arriving. Just quickly say hello. Yeah, sure. Okay. Risen. Risen. Oh, I see we've got one of the peacocks wanting to learn to operate the heavy machinery. Is that Thor? Oh yes, that's definitely Thor. Uh, that's really super helpful, Thor, but you don't even have a driving license, so I think we're going to leave it to Amory if that's okay. You just make everything look prettier by your very presence. Beetroot, Maria? Yes. Beetroot? You're, <laughs> you're so cruel. I'm not. The worst thing is you keep making me like it. That's it. That's it. Look, I'm doing... um. A repeat of the beetroot and raspberry 
Tar Tar. Oh, that was really fun. Yeah, it was like an experiment and I think it worked. Yeah. No um, one else would think of putting beetroot and raspberry together. And cornichons. And cornichons. It's, I mean, yeah. it sounds weird. Repul repulsive, it yeah. has to be said, but it was really, really good. It worked good. Yeah, with, the, with the goat's cheese as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, okay, I look forward yeah. to that. So that's tonight. Yeah. Yum. yeah. I'm running over to show everyone what you've been doing for the boiler room. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I've got the footage of you last week when you were just starting with it, mm -hmm. and then you and the whole family working yeah, it together. Proper, it was a proper family affair. Ah, oh, okay. I'm going to show everyone now, and then I'll go in and have a look in the room. No You're worries. amazing. No and so it's on here that we'll have the fireproof boarding, and on the other side as well, both sides. I need to build the frame in situ mm. to then not take it down, but to lower it to then put the board on the back yeah because um the uh, drill doesn't reach and we need it as tight to the wall as possible so that we can continue the boxing yeah all the way up the chimney as well so i need it as tight to the wall as possible and then but at the same time it sort of impedes me by being able to put the board yeah, on yeah and get the drill in yeah, i'm glad you're doing back, this it needs boarding on the back and, and the, the front, front. And as well, the other reason why is it could have been a lot easier if, if the ground was level, then we'll just build it on the deck, yeah, put the board it. on, and then raise it. But, um, yeah, there's what is there? We've got on this side it's 2650, and then over here 2604. That's massive change, yeah, it's a massive job. So, I'd rather build. Well, yeah, you just... Exactly, you build it, you know exactly what it is. You know, that's, yeah. that's why I put the rails on the back, put the brackets on so that it's holding in place. But there's the rest of the uprights to put in. Yeah, when we put the backboarding on, yeah. we lift it. Hopefully, we can lift it because that's five sheets of plastic. <gasps>
footage because you can see how Amri and his parents have always worked together. Stephen is the only person Amri will really let help him on a project. And my aunt was with him the whole time as well. And now Natty's getting involved too. It was just lovely watching them all working on it as a family. As you can see in here, we've stored some of the pieces of furniture that we brought back from Venice last week. They're waiting to go into the chateau. And the next stage is that against this fireproof wall, all of the boiler equipment will be fitted. And once it's in place, Amri will continue to build a roof and three other walls around it so that we end up with all of the boiler equipment in a totally fireproof room within this room. You may think I'm mad, but I honestly think the world's going to want to see how small you managed to get those carnations. Well, that's not small enough. That's like the first phase. What's the second phase? So you go... Duh, 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 duh. Okay, so really sad. That's why I didn't know there were yeah. carnations in there. You well, yeah. disguised them. Yeah. And capers. And capers. And then we've got a raspberry vinegar. Did, did you just them. chop that? Yeah. But look at the beetroot. Yeah. And they're going to mix it all up, make, let it marinate. And then I might even add, well, I'd like it, I will add some mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Some mayonnaise. To bind it together. Philip's going to be very happy. Yeah. But it's just, it does sound very, very peculiar. I do, I do realise. It sounds like the massive one, the French massive one, but much less mayonnaise and much more vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just going to, just to bind everything together. Yeah. And add a bit of creaminess. I'm sorry, what was that? Creaminess. <laughs> Here it is, the final version going in. Yeah. Micro cognition, we micro call them. Micro cognition, yeah. Adding to the micro raspberries and micro beetroot. Yeah. Pavlina has been putting the flowers all over the house. Most of these are ours, but there is one of the ranunculus from Jean-Baptiste. It's so fresh and delicate there, especially next to Andy's watercolours. I see Pavlina has made the flowers in here. They are so delicate. I love the anemones. Quite sad that it's the last of the anemones because they really have been gorgeous. Here's more of Jean-Baptiste's flowers, the anemones, and with our irises that are just starting to come out now. So Lalande, well represented in this bouquet. Oh, it's a potato accordion. Yes. Well, actually, we were just talking about potatoes. We literally were just looking at the potato beds. Have you seen them all coming up by no, the chapel? Yeah, no. It's an entire field of potatoes. Well, yeah, that's what Pavlina promised me. So oh, you, she's given it. She has yes. delivered. Yeah. So you can have as many potato accordions as you want. I'm not sure how many I do want, but it's pretty cool. Hang on. This is like some Leonardo da Vinci know, double you look, helix. You like look inside, it's pretty cool. What have you done? It's witchcraft. Yeah, that's it. You take a potato, we'll cut off the other bits. And that bit. Right. So you put it in between. And then first you make cuts this way. Yes. And then you turn it, you flip it round, and then you do it diagonally. Oh. And that's why the spoon's there to stop you going all the way through. Yeah. But so a Hasselback potato would be just this. I think. I believe so. Yes. So don't do yeah. it. Don't do it at home like this. But hey ho. It's right. really been a day for chopping. For so, you. yeah. Well, it's not even the end of it. And then now I'm going to do it this way around. Where did you get this idea? I mean, on the internet or the Instagram, specifically as Amory would call it. Yeah. The YouTube. The YouTube, yeah. Okay, so it should now do the thing. This one's a smaller one, but yeah. That's so okay. clever. And then as, as they cook, um, yeah, the bigger ones get more kind of open. Yeah, as they cook, I'm going to take them out and um, spread them out a bit more. So that, you know, you have this. Look how pretty yeah, that is. One, well, since you usually put background music on, you could do like French bistro. <laughs> <This is Yeah. laughs> as I, as we bring the main. That's so it's kind of like idea. general kind of mm. ambiance music. And then suddenly. All of a sudden it changes. We're to... one oh, yes. Yeah, I'd yeah, like that. Yeah. Now I can see where you are going. Yeah. Oh, all of those sure. tiny little things all put together. It's just gorgeous. And you can't see the quality shots at all no? the other. The other bits. You fooled me last yeah. time. We need to do dew dot dew dew drop. Oh, and then the onion flowers. And um, I really like the fact that Pavlina made the flowers to match the food. You'll see. I'm gonna go and have a look now. Yeah. Then is the table done? I think so. I'm just putting rosé on, and All that's right. it. I'm gonna go and have a look because apparently Pavlina organised the flowers to match the food. Correct. Purple flowers. Yes. I like it because. I can't believe we're now matching the flowers to the colour of the food. This is new. This is new even for Lelland. Beautiful again, Philip.
really fresh, fun. I like the little bees. You basically almost always use the bees or the peacocks nowadays. Yes, but also the silver ones. I try and do something a little bit different every single time. So at least when it's the same plate and the same tablecloth, there's different napkins or different glasses. So. Yeah, so we never have the same table setting twice. Probably not never. <laughs> there are not <laughs> infinite amount of options, but they are, yeah. I try to do something a little bit different. I love it. I'm loving these flowers as well. That's with Jean-Baptiste's flowers here. Gosh, that's beautiful. It's so delicate. And even though it's such a sunny day, it is still a little bit chilly in the evening inside. So we've got a roaring fire courtesy of Amory. It's time for dinner. I'm just taking the wine through. I think the dew drop is my favorite bit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a, a beetroot and raspberry tartare uh, with the local goat's cheese. I've got nasturtium and onion flowers from the garden. Mm -hmm. As you'll see, they're the same flowers as you've got on the table that Pavlina's uh, arranged. Thank you. Thank you. And Pavlina picked the flowers especially wow. to match the flowers on the table. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, thanks very much. Well, before it gets cold, um, it's, we've got beef with accordion potatoes, uh, young broccoli shoots from the garden, roasted andives, and what Natty has allowed me to call chateau churi. Oh. So, all the ingredients of a chimichurri, but let's start with a chimichurri. Yeah. Chimichurri. Yeah. Chimichurri. I'm most excited about the accordion potatoes. Oh, yes. <laughs> we were watching Maria make these earlier. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. You've got to try pulling them apart. It's really weird. It's like some Leonardo da Vinci stuff with these potatoes. Philip, is that accordion music I hear in the background? Yeah, me too. It's just, I think just played the theme from Aloha Aloha. Have you seen Aloha Aloha? <laughs> <laughs> Philip's just told us all there's a deer on the lawn. This is very unusual. They're in the woods, but we never see them on the lawn. Just tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. I think they've come out just to see all of you. But the fact that Philip just ran through deer on the lawn, deer on the lawn. She's looking this way now. Yeah. It's nice with the sunset in the background. It is. I think it looks like she's waiting for another deer. That would be nice. Come on. Where are you? Uh, off she goes. A jump. <laughs> uh, well, to finish, we have an apple and apricot galette uh, with an apricot and cardamom compote and uh, creme de isigny, or basically very fancy creme fraiche. So, oh, also, I can say that the compote's really nice because I did lick nice. the spoon. <laughs> the spoon was not reused afterwards. I would just like to, <laughs> like to add that. <laughs> Thanks. Thank Wasn't that exciting with the dough? Yeah. It was exciting! Yeah. At the interval, well, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that dear made your evening. So you, so, you, so you do live in rural France, France. <laughs> <laughs> That's our closest neighbour. Rural France. Thank you all for joining us for another day at Leland. And once again, I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons. Your support makes the world of difference when facing renovations like that of the chapel. And in today's patron video, if you haven't seen it yet, I go through the quote item by item breaking it down and looking at all of the things that need to be done. Thank you all for your support and for the incredible helpful comments that you've already left for me on that video. Today, I would like to say a special thank you to Jared Bortz, Jarka Bukova, Kevin Boroughbridge, Brandon and John Michael, and Paulina Calabro. You all make such a huge difference. Thank you so much. And lots and lots of love to all of you who are watching. I look forward to seeing you again at La Land on Thursday.